Today we're going to talk about freeze protecting your backflow preventer here in the Houston, Texas area. So I live in Sugarland, and it freezes about once a year maybe and it maybe get down to 31, 30 degrees just enough to cause havoc for our sprinklers. So today we're going to talk about what a backflow preventer is and then we're going to talk about freeze protecting it. So over here is the backflow preventer. And you can see mine is uh, 14 years old, <clears throat> so it's got some nice corrosion on the valves that don't work anymore. You also have these bleed valves, which most people say to turn on and uh, turn off these valves, and you and you bleed it, and then you're good to go. That's not what I do. What I do is I take the whole shooting match off, and you're done. Don't even have to worry about anything. No bleeding. No nothing. But in order to do that, you have to have you have to insert or you have to put put in place these what's called a union. It's called a pipe union. So these are what's uh, what I added to this to this um, backflow preventer um, riser. This is called. Just want to make a note. There's an arrow that you can barely see on the backflow preventer, and that indicates which direction the water flow is. So the water actually travels up this pipe through the backflow preventer and down this pipe and it goes to the sprinklers. So um, let's talk about, so before you do it, in order for this to work you have to have these unions. So what I did for the unions and how I, how I work, it's simple, I went to the local Home Depot or Lowe's, your preference, <clears throat> and I went and bought two PVC pipe unions. Now you can cut these into the this into these riser pipes at any point. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> For some reason I, I put in a it's called a um, socket um, uh, joint. It's just a bare pipe. <clears throat> and on this side, if you could see down here, you can see some threads. So right below the back plover printer, there's a threaded end. So this one has a thread end and a plain end, that's what it's called, plain end, um, and this one just has two plain ends. So what I do is I peeled off the insulation and I used my handy dandy saw and I just cut the pipe. That's all you need to do for PVC, you just cut the pipe. <clears throat> now we'll have, when you cut the pipe off, of course, I gotta say this, you gotta turn off your water your um, your main valve, and we'll get into that just a little bit when we talk about freeze protecting it. But of course, when you're ever you're, you're modifying your your sprinkler system, you want to make sure that the water is turned off, and your sprinkler system is turned off. Am I right? Yeah. <clears throat> so then you can put all the stuff in. So anyway, you go to the store, you buy some unions, you buy um, some PVC cement, which is just regular PVC cement glue. So I've had this for years. I probably can't get the cap off. You cut the pipe, you put the union on, you put the uh, pipe back on, you glue it all up. It's pretty simple. These things cost probably, if you're lucky, $1.45, and if you're unlucky, about $3.45. Now, the size, um, you, you got to buy it the same size as your pipe. This is one inch pipe. You can't really tell that until you, um, get, uh, until you measure it. Most of the pipe here is, is one inch. Sometimes they're one and a quarter. Sometimes they're three quarter inch. Um, so when you're at Lowe's, just buy all three different kinds, three different sizes, and just use the ones that you need, and then take the rest of them back. That's the easiest way to do that. No measuring, no anything. <clears throat> okay, so now let's talk about how to freeze protect your backflow preventer. Uh, we talk about what happens when your backflow preventer freezes. So say I didn't do anything and we had a nice hard freeze and it got down to 27 degrees for about four hours. What happens is this whole pipe is filled with water and is always filled with water even if you turn it off at the street. This pipe is filled with water. <clears throat> so what happens is the water freezes and it has to go somewhere and what will happen is on the inside of this backflow preventer and I meant to take this top off there's a plastic innards that have the that have a little valve that 
goes up and down and it'll uh, because it's plastic the water the frozen water will break that plastic and will and the reason when you figure out that your backflow preventer was frozen and broken is that after it everything thaws back out this thing will be spewing water everywhere you know have a nice gusher of water <clears throat> that's when you know your backflow preventer is frozen <clears throat> and broken so then you have to replace all that stuff so let's not let's not worry let's not do that let's prevent it in the first place okay so let's uh let's go to walk through the steps of freeze protecting your backflow preventer after your unions are in place. First thing we'll do is we'll walk around to the to the uh, front of the I mean to the where your um, what is it called the box the uh, sprinkler system control box. You'll want to turn that right now. It's in the run position. You want to turn that to the off position. First thing to do, make sure it's turned off. Second thing, we go up to the front by the street where the uh, water, what's it called, the uh, the main water cutoff is. Not all not all houses are like this, not all systems are like this, but some of them are, and, and most of the new ones are. We have the main valve that cuts off, you know, where the meter, the meter valve is, that cuts off the water to the whole house. I have a line that tees off of that main line right here at the, at the street. It's got a manual shutoff valve, and then it's got an automated valve. The way the sprink, our sprinkler system works is when a zone comes on, it turns on this valve, and it turns on zone one, and everything comes on, and, and, it, and the sprinkler system works. So what I'll do is I'll turn this valve off. Let's see if I can't turn it off here. Per, uh, perpendicular to the pipe means it's off. Parallel means it's on. So I've turned it off here. Then we'll go up to the backflow preventer. So the the line from that control, uh, that, that main automated valve, goes straight to the backflow operator before it goes to any zone. Uh, I haven't touched this in a long time, so I'm going to get my gloves. Sometimes you might need a wrench, an adjustable wrench. Sometimes uh, you should only be able to, you should only need to hand tighten these things. Unions. So I'll. Loosen that, and I'm going to loosen this. And check this out. And that's it. I've now taken off my back plover inner, and I'm going to put this back in the garage. Now you can see in here that there's water. I've, uh, on past freezes before, I've seen that water, I've seen the ice form up in this and it'll push it out that far. That's what causes the insides of this to break. So, <clears throat> now that that's done, <clears throat> you also want to remember, make sure to put on freeze protection on your hose bibs. That's easy enough to do. You set the uh, back full of renter in the garage. That's it. Now, what you do is you sit in your easy chair and you take out your beverage of choice. I prefer Old Forester. And you watch the bumper cars, the people playing bumper cars when the, when the uh, roads freeze over. Because in Houston, we just shut down the whole city and we just watch all the people who are crazy enough to get out on the roads and, and uh, slide around. So, cheers. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> it's real easy to, to uh, put it back in place, so say it warms back up, you know, right around January the 15th or so, you come back and you get your backflow preventer, <clears throat> you put it back onto your 
uh, risers. Let's see if I can't turn it the right way. I think I did. I'm gonna turn this the right, this way. I think I did. You wanna get it to, you know, tight. You go back to the front of the street. Oh, not even, I'm not gonna do that. Go back to the street, you turn the valve back on, you turn it, go back to your control box, you turn your control box back on, and you're ready to go. System works, and you don't have to worry about replacing that bad boy or calling a plumber who will charge you uh, $250 to fix the insides of that. All right, hope this helps. See ya.